Hey guys, so today's video I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to set up my new tarantula enclosure. So basically what I did, I have my snake rack covered right now just to give them more privacy. What I did with the 20 gallon long that tofu was in, I divided it in thirds with the two side pieces that were originally in her tank. So basically I'm reusing everything that she had, I'm just doing it slightly differently. So in this tank right now, I only have fra. My plan was to get more. Oh my gosh, my dogs are knocking me over. Boys, what are you doing? So my plan was originally to get these up with the tarantulas I was going, um, expecting to buy at the upcoming reptile expos. But what I noticed was when I filled this 20 gallon long with dirt, it got extremely heavy. So I'm rethinking my plans for this project. I still like the way that it's divided and the fact that it's glass. It still has that really nice look to it. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to switch him back to the 10 gallon that he was in, except I'm gonna divide it in half so that I have room for another spider, which I actually just got today. So here is a close up of Fra. This is about as close as I can get without the camera getting all blurry. It kinda seems like he's stressed cause I kinda just dumped him in there last night. But hopefully when I get him like completely settled back into a more permanent environment, he'll go back to his normal ways of just hiding in the burrow. In there. I did put live pothos plants in here, which I think I'm actually gonna not do for the 10 gallon tank just because I don't want to have to deal with watering it and making sure it has sunlight and everything. So I'm just gonna go back to the fake plants, maybe switch it up from the flowers and desert scape that he had before and just go with a more jungle vibe. Even though he is a desert species, uh, I just kind of want to try something different. So here's Fra's 10 gallon tank. This is what I originally kept him in. Basically what I did was I took the tank to Home Depot and used it so that I could measure stuff for it. By the way guys, Dollar Tree for fake plants. All of these was about 12 bucks total. So don't buy your plants from the pet store. Just go to the Dollar Tree and you can get literally the same things like pothos. I got some ferns. These are new. I haven't seen them there. But I bought a bunch of them because I want them for my gecko, my snakes, and tarantulas. Basically anything exotic animals. Like this is, this is some good stuff right there. So when I went to Home Depot, I basically measured out the tank. And I ended up getting this 10 by 12 clear replacement glass. This is just to replace like windows or picture frames. This fits almost perfectly. I'm going to divide it in half like that. Right now it won't go in because it's got some cardboard. I will have to cut it down just a little bit because it is slightly bigger than what it needs to be in order to fit on the inside. So basically I'll have that divided tank just like I have with my 20 gallon long. And then what I'm going to do is I found these three plexiglass. Is it plexiglass? It's polycarbonate sheets. So what my plans are, and this is just me going off of my creativity. I think I spent like 20 minutes at Home Depot just staring at all these pieces and trying to figure out which size I should get and how I should set up the lid to the enclosure. So basically what I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to take this middle piece, cut it in half so that it fits in here perfectly. And then I'm going to have these two on the sides. I also got these black hinges. So what I'm planning to do, if my dog will move out of the way, Jesse, he likes to be in the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put hinges and attach these two pieces to the middle piece so that each piece can lift up separately of the other one. So that way, if I'm just trying to feed one tarantula, I don't have to worry about the other one escaping out. Hopefully this works. I haven't quite figured it out yet. This is all just me trying everything for the first time. So we'll see how it goes. So I've cut the glass and I think I'm going to be using acrylic from now on for the divider piece because look how poorly this piece of glass is cut. Like, like this isn't so bad. There's a little chip there. That's okay. And then when I went to do the length and then bam, that happened. What I've learned is I think glass cuts perfectly if you're cutting from big pieces to smaller pieces. Like, a drastic difference but for me because since I was only taking half a centimeter off of this edge and then a centimeter off of this edge there wasn't much 
of the glass to cut and I think that's kind of where it went wrong because when I started putting pressure on this side because it was already so close to the rest of the glass it just gave me that big chip right there so although it is half the price of acrylic pieces I think from now on I'm just going to use acrylic for my divider so this was just I mean it's workable but it could have been a lot worse I could have chipped it all the way into the middle if you're going to do this just make sure you know what you're doing if you're cutting glass or just go with acrylic, which you can cut with a razor blade. I've installed the dividing glass and I thought I would be better at this because I have experience in caulking, but this was a lot more difficult than I thought it was because I had to align it with this side and the bottom and this side. So what I did was I divided it in half with a ruler and marked my line with the expo marker. It's been hard trying to get all three sides to line up. Here's what it looks like. It is a mess right now. I ended up leaving the cracked side up here because I forgot that I was gonna put like a foam background on there. So that's gonna cover up the hole nicely. Also the, <clears throat> the nicer end of the glass is on this side too. So I'm gonna leave that alone. So basically I think my front is gonna look like this. It actually doesn't look too bad from the front, but then the back is just horrible, but that will all be covered with the foam background. So while I'm waiting for the glass to cure in there, I'm just gonna cut these top pieces to size. This should be a lot easier because this is polycarbonate and it should just cut with a reg uh, regular razor blade. So basically I just marked the edges here so that it will actually fit in flat because right now it's sticking out. All right, so here is what I have so far. After about an hour of cutting through plastic with a razor blade, I realized I should have just bought the plastic cutter in the first place because it's meant to cut through acrylic pieces and plexiglass and that would have been a lot easier. I did go over the marks a little bit so I'm gonna have a few scratches here and there but I don't care too much. I'm not super OCD about perfectionism. I've made grid marks with my ruler and did cross sections of it and at each intersection of the lines I'm gonna be drilling ventilation holes. Now I finished drilling the holes. My plan is I'm going to glue this middle piece to this dividing glass and also to here. Actually, I'm going to silicone it so that way this will stay in place. It will never move. It's stuck to the tank and then these hinges will be attached to these. So this way it's going to open like that and that way I can access either side without having to disturb the other tarantula. I have siliconed this middle section to the dividing glass and I've also added hinges to the sides. I'm gonna let this dry because I don't wanna move any of the alignments off, otherwise it's gonna be really hard for me to open the doors. But while I'm waiting for that, I got this foam insulation board from Home Depot. It was like $5. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it out to size and put make a kind of like a stone natural looking background and then I'm gonna silicone it to the back. Kind of like you would find the ones that Exoterra makes when you buy their enclosures. In case anyone is curious about what these pieces look like after they're cut, I'm just making a background. I'm not making it all the way because my tarantulas are terrestrial, so this is all gonna be covered with substrate anyways. So I finished painting the background. It looks pretty cool, I think. I tried to make it almost like outdoor rock climbing because I rock climb as well. So at this point, I am essentially pretty much done. I'm just waiting for these backgrounds to dry so that I can silicone them onto the back. I've gone ahead and installed the little magnet locks. So these are basically found in the cabinet section of Home Depot. It basically connects to the magnet on the door and then it locks in place. So it gives it a little bit more security than just having the tarantula poke itself through. 
These have also dried the hinges here and they work great. I'm just using a piece of tape right now to open it because I forgot to buy knobs at the store. So that's what it's gonna be right now. I am currently just making decorations to go into the enclosure. I got a piece of cork bark. This is for the new tarantula and it's just gonna lay kind of like that and provide like a starter burrow for it. I took out Fra's piece of cork bark and I think I'm gonna snap it in half and maybe re-glue it so that it's flatter because he's kind of getting too big to fit in it. And then with the dollar store ferns, since they are too tall, what I did to kind of pinch pennies here is I cut it in half and then I used the top piece as is. And then the bottom piece I cut to make it look like a fern. So it's kind of, you can see how poor it is, but from far away, no one's going to notice because they're going to just be looking at the tarantula the whole time anyways. So I'm pretty happy with how things are turning out. I'm just going to continue hot gluing these pieces together and then possibly figure out what I want to do with the pothos plants because I realize this thing essentially takes up half of the tank. So I got to figure out a way to maybe just strip it down to like one or two stems and glue it somewhere or just poke it into the substrate. I have already installed the background with silicone. So you can still kind of see it's like ugly on the back, but it's okay, no one's gonna see the back. I've gone ahead and I have pretty much finished building the little terrarium. It is filled with a peat moss substrate. And then on top, I just took cocoa chips from what I use for my snakes and I kind of like ground them up with my fingers. So now I've got cocoa fiber and Luca wants to eat it. And you can't eat it, Luca. So this is what it looks like on this side. And this one I'm gonna put my new tarantula in. On this side is where I'm gonna put from. I also made these little like cup holders, I guess, for their water dishes. I just thought it would be kind of cute. I carved them out of the same foam that I used for the background. And basically I can put these little vitamin water bottle caps into them. So they go in nicely. And I have a whole bunch of these bottle caps that I've saved for my crested gecko so I can easily just pull it out and replace it. They really don't need these water bowls because they're both Fra, the Chilean Rose, and the new tarantula I just got. They're both desert species, but it's still nice to give it to them just in case they really are thirsty. I almost never spray down Fra's tank because he hates it when it's wet. He actually gets stressed out because they don't like the ground getting all stuck to their feet when the substrate's wet, so I'll always find him climbing up onto the corners of tanks when he's stressed. And that's one way to tell if your tarantula isn't happy. If it's a terrestrial species and that terrestrial species is not on the ground like it's supposed to be. So here is what the final product looks like. I'm gonna remove this covering. I ended up just using these little burlap string ties as the covering for now because I don't know, maybe if I can find like a nicer little knob to cover these magnets right here. But right now I think these strings look kind of cute because it gives it more of like a prehistoric look. But I am pretty happy with the way it turned out. This is what it looks like from the top. It's completely see-through. This is what it looks like from the front. And then on Fra's side, this is what his side looks like. It does look like there's too much substrate in there, but my goal is to have these tarantulas make burrows because they do like them. They're not obligate burrowers, the two species <coughs> I have. Stop barking. <coughs> I'm trying to make a video. Can I make a video? <coughs> no? Oh, ADD, distracted by the floor. Anyway, so this is what the tank looks like. It's just a 10 gallon. <coughs> It looks pretty cool in my opinion. Dude. I'm trying to make a video. Can I speak? You want to speak? Okay, bye. All right, so here is Fra. He's waiting to go into his new home. For my next tarantula, here's the reveal. I got a Texas tan. So I've been wanting this one for a while now. It's just, they're not very commonly kept because I guess they're kind of underrated. But this is what she looks like. She's still got some growing to do. She's a juvenile captive bred by a breeder here in Orlando. So that's what she looks like. I'm super excited to get her. Her rump right there 
should turn like bright red as an adult I think I mean you can see it's kind of, it's like pretty bright red right now but she's still got some more hair to grow it's not as fuzzy as uh, it should be and here is the side for my Texas tan tarantula I have figured out that he is a male based on the way his hair runs on the bottom of his abdomen and so I've named him cowboy because he's from well, he's a Texas tan tarantula. He's not from Texas because he's captive bred here in Florida. But he kind of also looks like he's wearing a cowboy hat because of that tan coloration. So that is, that's going to be cowboy. And this is what his side of the tank looks like. Let's see if I can move my light. It's just my, the flashlight on my cell phone. He's looking pretty happy. On Fra's side, I made a burrow for him because he's a Chilean rose and they're known as pet rocks so they basically don't do anything. He will go into a burrow but I have to make it for him. He's not going to make his own. So there is Fra and this is his side of the tank. So it's pretty similar to the setup I have on the other side for Cowboy. But he's got a little bit more space because his side of the tank is essentially done. He's not going to change it. He's never webbed for me before and he's never made a burrow in his whole life. So whatever I make it right now is pretty much how it's going to stay. As for this guy, I saw him kind of try to burrow in the container that I got him in. So hopefully he starts doing something. Maybe he'll start webbing. They are terrestrial tarantulas, so they don't really web too much. But I'm kind of hoping that he's a little more active than Fra. And maybe he'll make that little burrow right there a little bit deeper. I only like stuck my finger in there. So we'll see. So that is it for my tarantula enclosures. And I'm gonna do a quick update on Pickle's enclosure. I've got my cell phone light up here just so that I can see what's inside it. So the last time I filmed her enclosure, I had a bunch of live plants in it, but half of them pretty much died. The only thing that's real is this, the leaf with the bright green stripe down the middle. Everything else is fake. The little pothos right here, that's fake. Fake ferns. That's real. That's fake. This is how bad I am at keeping live plants. So, I mean, it looks pretty good in my opinion. So, I think this is what I'm gonna stick to because since this philodendron is the only thing that has grown in this low light that I have, I'm just gonna keep it that way. I'm not gonna continue to replant it. I've replanted her enclosure like seven times already and all the plants keep dying. So I'm not gonna waste my money or time doing that. There's Pickle right there, laying down. I just fed her some crickets. She's doing pretty good. I've noticed that as I've added more plants or tried to add more plants over the last few weeks, she has been more active. I think just because there's more climbing opportunities or maybe she's just settling down more, but she's she used to hang out just right here on this on this glass, right by this little stump of the branch there. But I've noticed she's been climbing around more so I think that's a good sign that she's doing pretty well in her enclosure. All right, thank you guys so much for watching.